There is definitely only one. Melissa Etheridge, please welcome straight from Off Broadway, our first Hall of Hustle member, the legendary Melissa Etheridge. Oh, thank you so much. How does it feel to be up oh. there, one woman show? I mean, is it? How does it feel different from a concert? It's really different. Concerts are like I, I, I make a different set list every night. I go in and it's like we're gonna just have a blast. Right. You know, we're gonna, I'm gonna lift you up and would we'll sing this song and that song and just my whole idea is to keep people up and entertain. This, totally different. This is sit down. I'm gonna tell you something. Oh. And I start from the very beginning, and I, a lot of my, I mean, I love to storytell, I love to talk. I'm from the Midwest, we just, <laughs> you know, and, and so I just, it, it starts, you know, from the very beginning, and just goes all the way through, and it just gets bigger and bigger, and, yeah. and it's totally different, and boy, people on Broadway work very hard. Harder you, than the rock star world? Oh, yeah, oh, no, <laughs> it's like, oh, like, all day long, it's crazy, it's, it's, it's great, I mean, lots of, you get stuff done, yeah. I'll tell you, so full disclosure, my husband is a producer on the yeah. show, yeah. and he adores you so much, and he came home after one of the rehearsals crying, because oh. he knew what this meant for you. Oh, yeah. To have this, why, why was it so important at this point in your life to do this type of show? Well, it's very healing, I've, yeah. I've been open, most of my life, to, I decided a long time ago it's easier to just walk in my truth than mm. try to hide something or be something I'm not. And the more I did that, the the better I felt, the stronger I felt. And and even my songs were, you know, confessional and stuff like that. But lately, the last, you know, after going through cancer and then and then loss of my son to, um, you know, an opioid addiction, that was like, okay, this this is this if if I don't find a way to artistically, cathartically deal with this, because that's what my music is for me. It's like, you know, I'd go through a breakup and I'd sing about it now, you know, I can laugh about it, it's all good. And, it, you know, I can't laugh about, you know, some things yet, but it's a way to let it out and mm -hmm. share, also share, because there are, there are hundreds and thousands and thousands of people families, you know, groups of people, loved ones who go through this yeah. all the time, well, the that's loss. the power and... of a show like that, and that's even with this show. You want people to know that they're not alone. Yeah. And I remember, as I said, I love so much about your, your hustle, and what I mean by that is just people who just have a drive, right? And you have that, but how do you have the drive when you're driving past hurt, right? And so we were in the pandemic, and we were trying to book guests on the show. People didn't even want to show up on Zoom because they're dealing with so much. And mm -hmm. you were dealing with a global pandemic, but a life pandemic because you lost your child. Mm -hmm. And you showed up for us. And I thought, how? I'm, Moses was a tiny, he's three, but he was even younger than yeah. And I thought, this woman, how is she doing concerts from her garage for other people three nights, you know, three days a week you were doing these great concerts. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That was September 18th, 2020. You're, it, you're doing garage concerts, grieving, and also dealing with the same things that the rest of us were dealing well, with. Well, the, the garage concerts healed me greatly yeah. because uh, one of the things is, is losing him during a pandemic, we couldn't have a funeral. We couldn't kind of have closure. And so I was just kind of dangling there with my you know, heart and my guts you know, hanging out. Yeah. So it was like, I need to do something. And I... I like I said, singing and performing is so healing to me, so healing. Is that... it out of body? So like, I was looking at you in this moment and I'm thinking, yeah. is she thinking about anything else in the world other than that song? No, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's so in the moment. And this literally is my garage. Yeah. And so we, my wife and I went there, we cleaned the garage. First of all, it was, it was very cathartic. <laughs> you should try doing that sometime. And we cleaned it, then we put all these things up we went and found them. I found like that old guitar case and, and you know, all this stuff that, and that was healing, kind of bringing me back into, look, I've lived this life. Yeah. I've gotten through things and, and you know, just, just then singing, 
I, you know, I can't explain. I mean, people, some people running makes yeah. them feel that way. Some people, who knows, you know, what, what it is that lifts you up. But yeah. my son wouldn't want me to be weighed down with, with guilt or shame. My son would not want me to be unhappy. But, you know, the, the first morning after his death, we used to text all the time. It was like every day, all day long, pretty much. He was really in contact with me. And I woke up, and, and as I was just starting to wake up, I just saw this vision of a text from him that just said, no pain. And it was like, he, he's telling me, look, I, I'm out of pain now. So for me to, to be in pain or, or, or stifle myself with that would not serve him, you know? Mm. That's, not, that's not what he wanted. He, he wanted to be out of pain, and he certainly doesn't want me to be in pain. That's why this show, the, that Off-Broadway show, is the right time <sighs> for you to do it. When we come back, more with Melissa on our Off-Broadway show. And I want to know what her first job was. Don't answer. <laughs> Who's the first paycheck Melissa Etheridge ever got? Uh-oh, after the break. <laughs> Today, our show is our first ever Hall of Hustle. People who work hard and never give up, even in the face of new challenges, tough times, and heartbreaking losses. We have some super fans of the great <laughs> Melissa Etheridge in our studio, all the way from the Netherlands, who've come to see our first Hall of Hustle member. Um, before the break, I said, okay, what was, I, I wanted to guess what, your first job. I know you wrote your first song at 11, right? Yeah. Your dad used to take you on the road. Yeah. And your career as a musician started at age 11. Yeah. Was that your first paycheck? Well, it was all in cash, so I can't, <laughs> I can't say that was paycheck. That was all, you know, the bartender would pay us at the end of the night, so you know. you were 11 and getting cash? Yeah. Yeah, I bought my first car at like 14. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was very independent. Look at you. Okay. Ah! Look at you there at when that. you see that That's picture. the last time I wore a dress. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you wore a dress. You that know. is so funny. But what is this story about a security guard? You well, were no, a security guard? The first paycheck. Now, see, I, I've had two real jobs. Okay. You know, like not, you know, paying under, under the, the table. table and so, so that. <laughs> my first paycheck, I decided my senior year of high school because I'd been playing since my since I was in seventh grade, I'd been playing in bands. My senior year, I wanted to be a normal kid. Yeah. I wanted to go to the football games. I wanted to be normal. So I stopped. Look at you. Oh my, I stopped doing that. That was me working in the bands. And my senior year I stopped and I got a job at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm. What what was the wait were you cashier? There's nothing like working there to make me go, oh, I really do want to be a professional <laughs> musician. Yes. What was yeah. your role at KFC? I was a packer. I could I could I can pack you an all-white nine-piece uh, <laughs> extra crispy right now. I know exactly what to put in there. We're not supposed to put too many breasts in there because that's you know that's uh, <laughs> you know they're gonna reach out to you and and like can you I be know. in a commercial for us? Yeah, right. So on. you can you can pack a two-piece and a pepper or whatever. <laughs> you, you bet, you, you bet, I can do it. Um, obviously, this is the job you love the most, yeah. being a musician. What job do you wish you had pursued? Like, if, if you weren't this, because I don't have an answer to that. When people ask yeah. me, I say, I guess a blackjack dealer in right. Vegas. <laughs> and I don't even know how to play cards, but I yeah. I always, this was going to be it. This, yeah. I had no backup plan. When, yeah, it, well, I had no backup plan, but when I think about it, when really, like, you know, what would you be doing? You know, yeah, I'd still be doing this, but I would probably, I think I would be something, my father was a teacher. And, you know, standing up in front of an audience, you know, in front of, of a class, teaching, inspiring, that's, that's as close, I think, to But that's really what you're teaching, that. even with this off-Broadway show. Uh, you're teaching people how to, to navigate, right? All of our paths are different. You, know, you could follow someone's exact steps and it turns yeah, out yeah, differently. But to your point earlier, there are so many common things. We're all going to experience joy. We're all going to experience heartbreak. We're mm -hmm. going to have highs. We're going to have lows. That's the journey. I have my little, this, as I said, my husband when producer. Oh. I had to, this is next to my bed. He literally, oh. he went to sleep like, ah. I'm like, really? <laughs> um, but that's the common thread. My window, a journey through life. Mm. And that is any of us. Yeah. I, I hope that when people do come see this, that uh, that they do see the commonality. They say, oh, that happened to me. There's a lot about coming out. There's a lot about, you know, being queer and, and what that was like in the... Well, I know my, one of my producers actually even pulled a headline uh, from an article, and I forget what year it was, but it was 26 years ago, and basically the big question they asked you at the time was, how are you going to explain to your child about not having a dad? Like, people don't even have that conversation, <laughs> I think, anymore. Yeah. But when you think about 
when, and I remember one of the magazine covers when you were on it, and it just set off this firestorm. So the conversation of LGBTQ plus now, two dads, two moms, yeah. non-binary, I mean, you're revolutionary in that world and still are. Oh, well, it, it was, it was really brand new, but it's, it's, it's fun now to see, um, I mean, my, my older kids knew who their dad was. That was, yeah. it was David Crosby. Yeah, of course. The younger ones. I remember that headline. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, wow. The younger ones, that, that was an anonymous thing. So yeah. they don't, so my daughter just goes, uh, Father's Day is like her favorite day. She's like, this is, you know, she's, and she'll, she'll, she'll go into terribly funny stuff. And, and so she's always joke, kind of joking, but it, it's not like serious. She's joking about not having a, a father. But I called her once, uh, she was somewhere, and I said, could I please, you know, talk to, to J Johnny Rose? And, and they, they came to him and they said, your father's on the phone, because I have such a low voice. <laughs> <laughs> and she just howled. Oh, she just think that's the funniest thing ever. That is amazing. So. Melissa's off-Broadway show, My Window, A Journey Through Life, is playing now through October 29th at the New World Stages in New York City. The show's run is sold out, but small batches of tickets are being released check each morning. Day. So check through your window and get to the door <laughs> because every day they're releasing small batches. Congratulations. We love you so much. Oh, yeah.